The Mindful Life Practice. Um, so we're going to do an Odaka style flow, which I know most people aren't really familiar with. I wasn't familiar with it when I did my um, RWT with them. But basically, it's a contemporary style of yoga. It was made by an Italian couple who were yogis, but they also used to practice a lot of martial arts. Um, <laughs> okay, bye guys. <laughs> So there's two main things that I want you guys to keep in mind for our practice today. So when we're practicing Odaka, um, the first thing is fluidity. So we're trying to bring this element of fluidity to our practice. And we're using a lot of wave-like movements with our spine, but also with our arms to try and create length and create space. Um, so for example, we'll do a couple explanations first, just so we're all on the same page and then we'll start. Um, bring your arms out to the front and place your palms together. So you can see if you check your fingers that they're in the same place, right? They're level with one another. But then if I bring my arms back out straight in front, I take my right arm and turn my palm facing up. If I slowly begin to curl my fingers and my elbow back towards my shoulder, and then when I get to my shoulder, internally rotating my wrist and bringing it forward, you can see that I've created a bit of length. So now my fingers on the right hand are a bit longer. Yeah. So we're using these movements just to create space. Yeah. And um, the second thing about Odaka is we move from the core. So every movement that we do, every posture and every transition, we're moving and initiating from here. So it's the difference between saying, move your arms up above your head, move them back down, move them up, move them down. You know, there's not a lot of awareness when we move like this. So what we're trying to do today is to think about even just having this idea of moving from the center of our body out to every end. So if I say, bring your hands to the side and then think about initiating that movement from your core, feel it lifting through your chest, through your arms, and you can see already that it's a lot slower. Yeah? So this is what we're kind of working on today, moving from the core and creating a bit of fluidity. So, when you're ready, go ahead and find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Oh, I need to get my phone so I know that we're on time. Okay. So in a comfortable seated position with your hands either on your knees, on your lap or on your thighs, just head, neck and spine long crown of the head lifting towards the ceiling. And either close your eyes or lower your gaze. And begin to bring your attention inward. Notice the physical sensation of your body pressing into the mat. points of contact between yourself and the floor, between your hands and your thighs or your knees. Then also beginning to expand out your awareness into the space around you. Become aware of the space directly above you, behind and to either side. Breathe here for just a moment. Just 
breathing into the whole body. But also breathing into the space around you. And when you're ready, begin to imagine that you're creating the tiniest possible circles with your spine. So this movement is originating from my tailbone and moving all the way up to the crown of my head. You may not even be able to see this movement from the outside. That's okay. Just feel the small, almost imperceptible circulation moving up through the body. And beginning to slow it down. And coming back slowly to center. Giving yourself a moment to feel grounded through the earth, but also lifting through the spine. And then if you'd like to, maybe opening your eyes if you want to see, but we're going to close them again if we can. I'm going to bring my left hand palm facing up a couple inches under my navel. I'm going to place my right palm also facing up on top of the left hand. I'm going to make a small triangle with my thumbs touching at the top and gently place my hands over this area just below my belly button. If you can here, close your eyes. And just feel the warmth of your hands. Moving into this area. Feeling the belly expand with each inhale into the hands. And then slowly bring the hands in the same position, just a few inches away from the same space in the lower abdomen. We're going to gently pulse. Imagining that you have a balloon, maybe a little rubber ball, that you're pressing into that space between your hands and your lower abdomen. You might even imagine that you feel a bit of resistance here. Or that you're creating a bit of energy. Now slowly bringing your hands back to this space just under your, under your belly button. And throughout our practice today, just remembering that when I say that we're going to move from the core, this is the space that I'm talking about. So taking a moment just to connect with this part of your body. With the understanding that it will help to bring awareness and strength to our practice. And if you'd like to set an intention for yourself today for this practice, maybe making a wish for yourself. Go ahead and do that now. When you're ready, bring your palms together in Anjali Mudra in front of the heart center. 
slowly open your eyes. So I'd like for us to practice um, part of what we do in Odaka Yoga, which is a prana flow. Um, so don't worry too much about the breathing right now. Let's just try and get the movements down so that we can feel that we're really gathering and building this energy up for our practice. So hands in front of the heart center. Again, moving from, this, from the core with this awareness, every part of the body is moving. Bring the hands up into Lotus Mudra above the head. Bend the elbows, bring the hands towards the shoulders. Internally rotate the wrist, push out to the sides as though you're pushing a bubble away from you. Bring the hands back slowly towards the center line, opening up, bringing your hands overhead, and coming back down. So we'll practice this movement four more times because we're also going to do it standing. So again, from the core lifting through the hands, feeling the space between the fingers. Hands above the head, bend the elbows, bring the hands towards the shoulders. Internally rotate the wrist, actively push out into that space around you. Bringing the hands towards the center line, bending the elbows, gathering the energy up, and coming back down through the heart center. Again, lotus mudra up. Bending the elbows, hands towards the shoulders, internally rotate, push out. Bringing the hands towards the center line, opening up, feeling the chest expand, and coming back down. Last one, lotus mudra up. Bringing the hands towards the shoulders, pushing out to the side. Hands towards the center line, scooping up and coming to rest. Take a moment here if you would like just to feel the energy that we've generated in our, our, our arms and our hands. And then bring your hands into this position with your Thumbs pointing up. We're going to use this space in between our thumb and our index finger to gently, gently, carefully push into the crease between our hips and our upper thighs. So I'm creating a bit of pressure here just to open up and then I'm going to lean forward only as much as is comfortable for you and begin to gently shake. So we do this kind of tailbone shaking movement to wake up the spine. allowing that movement to move up through the spine and out through the rest of our body, waking everything up. And then slowly, slowing down the movement, coming back to a neutral position. So now, last thing, and then I promise we'll, <laughs> we'll get up and start moving. So from here, hands on knees, we're going to create some circles with our spine. So the movement again is originating from here. I'm going to squeeze back, creating space between my shoulder blades and then almost like a vortex, bring my chest forward and then squeeze back, lengthen forward. Squeeze back, lengthen forward, squeeze back. And the next time you find yourself coming towards the front, beginning to bring that left arm to the outside of the right knee, right arm comes back, gently twist, looking over the right shoulder. Beginning to move back, going directly into the same movement on the opposite side. Now I'm going counter. Chest is lengthening forward and then scooping back. 
core is engaged. Navel pressing towards the spine. And then when you begin to move forward again, moving that right hand forward to the outside of the left leg, left hand comes behind, gently twist. And then come back to center. So now, please find yourself in a standing position at the top of your mat. We're going to do the same prana flow that we did with our hands before, but now we're going to incorporate a bit more of our body. So, standing in mountain pose, feet directly under the hips, tailbone is tucked under, head, neck, and spine long, hands out to the side. When you're ready, with this awareness of the core, Bringing slowly your hands to rest together in Anjali Mudra. Bending in the knees, tucking the pelvis forward and up. Lotus Mudra up above the head. Slowly bending the elbows, bending the knees, bringing the hands towards the shoulders, pushing that bubble away from you. Bending the knees again, scooping the arms forward, almost as if you're collecting energy from the earth. Bringing that back up over your head and down to the center. We'll do this two more times. Again, bending in the knees, opening up the lotus mudra. Elbows bend towards the shoulders, hands internally rotate, push the bubble away. Lean down. Bending in the knees, rolling up through the spine. Bring your hands up. Come back to center. Last one. This time we'll end with a small back bend. Lotus mudra up. Hands towards the shoulders. Internally rotate the wrists, pushing out to the sides. Bending at the knees, scooping forward. This time, slowly rolling up. Bringing your arms back, coming into a small back bend, only as much as is comfortable for you. Then from the hips, hinging forward into your forward fold. So from here, creating a little bit of a wave with the spine. So I'm tucking my tailbone under and I'm waving forward and then folding forward into my Utkanasana. So from here, I'm going to bend one knee gently. Oh, you can hear it popping. <laughs> bend the other knee. Slowly back and forth, just with your breath in your own time. Feeling the sensation of your feet on the mat. Feeling grounded. Strong. And then when your weight has transferred over to your left foot, bending the knees, placing the hands on the mat, and very carefully from the core, extending that back leg out, pushing through the heel, how slowly can you bring that back foot to the mat? We're gonna do the same thing with the left foot, pushing into the hands from the core, pushing into that left heel, to come into our first down dog. You can take a few steps here, bending one knee, bending the other knee. Slowly finding your way to a neutral down dog position. We're going to create some waves with our down dog so you can practice this. Again, not really worrying so much, you know. This is, um, we're making these waves and things to create space in our practice. So if it doesn't feel good for you or <laughs> you, know, you find it a bit confusing, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. We're just trying to bring a bit of fluidity to what we're doing. You can always stop if it doesn't feel right for you. So finding yourself in your down dog, your knees bent. Bend the knees and bring them towards the mat. The body gently rocks forward. Then bringing the abdomen towards the sides, tailbone towards the ceiling. Begin to create a wave-like motion with your spine. 
to come over the wrists in a plank, bending the knees, and coming back into your down dog. If you want to watch me do this one more time um, and then practice it on your own, you can. So from my down dog, I'm bending my knees, rocking forward. Core is strong, bringing my abdomen toward my upper thigh, tailbone towards the sky. Then I'm tucking my tailbone, creating a wave with my spine to roll forward into plank. Bending the knees, slowly moving back into my down dog. So from here, we're going to do some movements with our tailbone. So gently bending one knee, bending the other knee, but exaggerating the movement of the pelvis so that we have kind of this half circle action going on. And then I'm going to bend my right knee and slowly drag it towards the center line. My core is very strong. And then bring that foot back. I'm gonna do the same thing with the left knee, bending my knee, dragging the foot along the mat. Bring that foot back. Last time with the right foot. Drag it slowly towards the center line, creating space. And slowly and controlled, bring your right foot in between your hands. Dropping the back foot down, we're going to come up into warrior one. So again, from the core, nice and strong, lifting up, and then sinking down into your warrior one. From here, float the arms back behind you, if you can, maybe clasping the fingers behind your back, and then gentle pull to maybe lengthen and open in the chest. Then, Wave forward, dropping your chest to the inside of the right leg. Hands unclasped on either side of the foot. Bring this foot back, pushing through the heel, three legged dog. Feel how every muscle in your body is working. Bend the knees, open the hip up to the side, half scorpion, maybe seeing if you can even see your foot over the left shoulder. Then create a circle with your right knee, bringing your right knee to your right elbow, bringing the foot across and down onto the mat to come into pigeon. You can use your back toes to help you get into the right position. Again, being very mindful of the knee. And if you're up here, that's also fine. You don't need to be all the way on the ground. So we're also going to create some movements here. So starting from the pelvis, moving up, waving up through the spine, lengthening and then gently folding forward. And from here, from the core, vertebrae by vertebrae, bringing that head, neck, and spine up. Waving down again. Slowing it down as much as possible. We're going for controlled and fluid movements. And when you find yourself down again, if it's comfortable for you and you're quite happy in your pigeon, you can maybe rest here for just a moment. And begin to feel how much heat we've created, even though we've not. <laughs> really done that much. Just moving slowly and mindfully in this way tends to generate a lot of heat. So when you're ready, bring your hands under your shoulders. And then tuck the back toes. Core is active. Pushing back into your down dog. One more wave here. So bending the knees, body is rocking forward. Tummy towards the thighs, tailbone towards the sky. Wave forward over the hands to a plank position. Bend the knees. Come back, down dog. So one more time, and then we're going to go into uh, cobra. So bend the knees. 
tailbone up to the sky, tucking the navel towards the sky and rounding, creating space between the shoulder blades, coming into your high plank. From here, knees, chest, chin. Now, <laughs> this one always is a bit tricky to explain, <laughs> but let's see if we can do it together. So I'm going to have my feet up. I'm going to squeeze my navel towards my spine, tuck my tailbone under to create a small wave-like movement and then come into my cobra. So I hope you can see this, okay? So again, from knees, chest, chin, Booty is in the air, yeah? <laughs> Feet up. Head is facing forward. Tailbone tucks under, navel squeezes chest. Small wave coming into your cobra. Yeah. Resting down. Do that one more time, maybe. No, it's okay, actually. Let's just go into down walk. We're fine. We're fine. Come into down dog. Okay, so from here, I'm going to start with the left foot, begin to gently drive that foot, core is very active, towards the center line. Coming back into the down dog with me, then right leg, right knee comes towards the chest. Shoulders are open in the back. Left knee comes forward, and slowly, gently step the foot in between the hands, Back foot comes down, inner thighs are engaged, core is strong. Begin to rise up and then sink down into your warrior one. Float the arms behind, clasping the fingers if it's available to you, maybe gently pulling up to lengthen across the collarbone and then waving forward gently towards the inside of that front leg. Unclasping the hands, bringing them on either side of the foot, pivoting that back toe so that it's facing forward. Squeeze this foot up as much as you can, pushing through the heel to your leg down. Opening the hip up to the side, half scorpion. If you can, maybe looking at your foot over the right shoulder. Bit of a back bend here. And then bringing this knee, this left knee to your left elbow, shin across the mat, or in any way that's comfortable for your knee, into pigeon. <sighs> I'm already getting warm, goodness. Okay, so from here, waving down slowly. Head is the last thing to come. Then waving up from the core. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Slowing everything down. One more of these. And then if it's available to you, resting your hands, resting your head just for a moment. And beginning to bring your hands under your shoulders, tucking those back toes, and coming into your down dog. With your knees bent, we're going to make another wave forward. So, bending the knees, rocking forward, tailbone up towards the sky, tummy tucks in, squeeze forward, high plank, bend in the knees, Back to down dog. You might begin to notice that you're opening up. There's maybe a bit more space, a bit more warmth. Now, as slowly as you can, if you need to help the foot, that's fine. Bending the right knee towards the chest, rounding in the shoulders so there's space between the shoulder blades, and then placing that foot in between your hands. Same thing with the left foot. How slowly can you bring that foot to meet the other? 
Waving through the spine towards the front, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees, rolling up through the spine, hands up to the sides. And hands at the heart center. Just check our time here. Okay, so we're going to do this. This is the basic flow that I wanted to do today. Um, but we'll begin to add a little bit more to it. So from here, bending at the knees, raising the arms up. Slowly folding forward, rolling through the spine, come halfway up. Exhale into the forward fold. Beginning again to bring awareness to your tailbone. Bending one knee, bending the other knee, and seeing how this makes these small semicircles with your tailbone. So now when the weight is transferred into your right leg, bringing the left knee up, pushing through that back foot, see how slowly and with how much control the whole body is working, you can bring that foot back. Same with the right. Slowly, slowly. We'll go straight into a vinyasa this time. So, bending at the knees, rocking forward. Abdomen towards the thighs. Tailbone towards the ceiling. Wave forward into your high plank. Knees, chest, chin to the mat. Tucking the tailbone under, squeezing the navel towards the spine, rolling through, cobra or up dog. Coming back. Making your way into your down dog. So this time, again, bringing that right foot slowly up towards the center line, squeezing in the core. Coming back, making a semicircle. Same with the left foot. To the center. One more with the right. And then last one, we're going to gently drag this left foot up and see how slowly we can place it in between our hands. I'm probably pretty warm now. I'm quite warm. <laughs> Dropping that back foot. Inner thighs engaged, core is strong. Coming up into warrior one. Arms gently floating behind your back, feeling the air on your palms as you move. Clasping the fingers if it's available to you, gently pulling down to the earth, opening the chest up, and lengthening forward, bringing your body to the inside of the left leg. Unclasping the hands, bringing them to either side of the front foot. I'm going to add a little movement here. So I'm going to make these small circles with my hips towards the front. So imagine that there's like a little wheel on the side of your hips and you're moving it forward. Yeah. So play with this for just a moment and see if when you move that circle back, can you straighten the front leg? Can you straighten the back leg? Bending that front knee. Hands on either side of the foot, engaging through the core, pushing through the left heel. Up, three-legged dog. Bending the knee, opening the hip up to the, over to the side, looking over your right shoulder if possible, and then bringing that left knee to your left elbow and across for pigeon. Again, wave motion slowly down. And rising back up, you can feel how warm you get. Another reason that we add these wave-like movements is because we're trying to make, trying to encourage the prana, the energy in our bodies to move more effectively. So you can see you don't have to move too fast to get things going. 
Maybe resting here for just a moment. Always, always listening to what you need. If you need to take a child's pose, take a child's pose. And if you're with me, placing your hands under your shoulders, tucking the back toe, using your core to create space and bring that left foot back onto the mat into your down dog. Now this time, starting with the left foot, we're gonna add one more beat. Dragging that foot. Think about rounding in the shoulder blade so that you're really engaging the whole body. And you're creating that space for that knee to come towards your chest. Yeah, the other side. Back to the left. And one more, bringing the right foot in between the hands, dropping the back foot, inner thighs, core engaged, and lift up, and then sink down on the exhale into a little more. Have a breath here. Bringing your arms behind, clasping the hands, pulling up gently. And then following gently forward to the inside of the right leg. Hands unclasp, back foot pivots towards the front. We're making these small circles with our hips here. So I'm moving my hips in small circles towards the front. And then in your own timing, experiment here. See how if when you're moving in this way, you can maybe straighten the front leg and maybe even straighten the back leg to get a nice hamstring stretch here. <laughs> nice, okay. So, pushing through, coming back into your down dog, and then waving forward again into your high plank, knees, chest, chin, tailbone tucks, navel towards the spine, small roll through the spine, come up into your cobra or your up dog. Rolling back, maybe you're into down dog again. Bending at the knees, rocking forward, belly towards the thighs, tailbone towards the ceiling, tuck your navel towards your spine, and then see if you can bring your right foot in between your hands. Can you bring now very slowly your left foot so that you're in a forward fold, waving forward halfway up and exhaling forward fold. Bending the knees, Slowly and controlled, moving up hands above your head and then down through the center line. We're going to do one more vinyasa. So bend the knees slowly, lifting the arms above your head, feeling your whole body move. Bend the knees, gently fold forward. Roll through to come to a halfway lift. And exhale into your forward fold. Again, gently bending one knee, bending the other knee. Feeling the tailbone move from side to side. This time, when your weight has transferred to your left foot, bend your right knee. Push through your right heel, slowly, 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 coming back, bringing that foot onto the mat. Pushing through your hands, using your core to tuck your left foot back and meeting the right foot for your down dog. Another vinyasa here. So bending at the knees, rolling forward, tailbone towards the ceiling, Nice wave motion towards the front, high plank. Knees, chest, chin, slow, slow, slow. Then from here, tailbone tucks. 
navel scoops forward. Up dog or cobra. Rolling slowly back, bringing your weight over your thighs and take a short child's pose here. Feel the energy in your body. I really love this style of yoga because it's really more of an embodiment practice than anything else. Not so much an exercise as it is just becoming aware of everything at the same time. Coming, finding your way into your down dog. Bending your right knee, raising forward. Bending the left knee and then pushing through that right heel to come to two legged dog. Again, bending the knee, opening the hip up to the side, looking over the left shoulder. But this time, bringing your right foot to the outside of the mat, the outside of the left foot, you're going to transfer your weight over onto your left arm and bring your belly up towards the ceiling. Right arm extend over the head for wild thing. Now scooping the arm back towards the center line, bring that right foot into the space between the left foot and the left hand. So the outside of my right foot is on the left side of my mat. Reverse wild thing. Come onto that left heel, push through the right arm, left arm extend over head. Come back, down dog. Same thing on the left side. If you need to rest, have a rest. So, bending the left knee, bringing it towards the chest, waving forward. Then using that right knee to bend, lengthen, push through the left heel. Opening through the left hip, off the side, looking over your right shoulder. Half scorpion. Then bring that right foot to the outside of the left, or sorry, the left foot to the outside of the right, sorry, bringing your weight up to a tabletop with your tummy facing towards the ceiling. Left hand extends over. Wild thing. Scooping back towards the center. Core is strong. Bring that left knee towards the chest and then over to the right side of the mat. So the outside of my left foot is on the floor and I'm pivoting my weight on my right foot to come up into reverse wild thing. Hips pushing towards the ceiling, right arm extending over my head. Slowly come back to your down dog. And then we're going to roll forward. So scooping from the toes forward, creating space in the shoulders, knees, chest, chin, tucking the tailbone, squeezing the belly, rolling forward, cobra, or up dog. How are you guys feeling? Are you okay? <laughs> I hope that you're okay. I'm just totally... You guys okay? Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I would like for us here, so we were in our, our down dog, but go ahead and come to a tabletop position. I want us to experiment with these movements a little bit to see if you can actually notice a difference, because sometimes it's hard, um, especially when you're first starting out. So if you're comfortable with camel or a variation of camel, go ahead and move into camel how you would normally move into camel. So if you want to have your, your toes tucked under behind you, that's fine. Um, maybe supporting the lower back with your hands, either fingers facing towards the front or fingers in your back pockets. And then beginning to open your hips up to the front, lift your chest towards the ceiling. How does this feel for you? Is there tension? For me, there's a lot of compression in the lower back when I go here. I can 
reach my feet if I want to, but it's not exactly comfortable. So kind of make a note of where you are and how it feels for you, yeah? And then we're going to go into this a different way. So one of the things that we do when we practice Odaka is before we do a movement, we prepare with the opposite movement. So if I'm going into a back bend, like camel, I'll prepare by being forward. So to prepare for our Odaka camel <laughs> and see if we can actually notice a difference, come into a child's pose, but with your feet in the same position that you're going to use for your camel. Yeah, so if your toes are tucked, fine. If they're flat on the floor, also fine. Whatever is comfortable for you, yeah? So bring your head and your arms out to rest for just a moment in front of you. Hmm. And what we're going to do is if we can, slow this movement down as much as possible. But we're going to squeeze. Start squeezing from your core. Begin to drag your hands slowly, rounding in the back. Dragging your hands slowly up the mat, slowly up your thighs, beginning to push your hips forward already. But my upper back is still rounded. Now, from here, see if you can reach back. You should be able to feel a bit more open. For me, this is a lot more comfortable. And then when you're ready to come out, come out to the side. So choose a side, come out, not straining the neck. Let's try that one more time. Yeah. So I'm in my child's pose with my toes tucked under, prepared for my camel. And I'm thinking about engaging from my core, initiating the movement from there. What happens? My spine begins to round. My fingers slowly drag up the mat, up my thighs. My hips begin to move forward. I'm still rounding in the upper back. And then my head is the last thing to come back into my camel. So just notice if there's a difference for you. If there's not, that's totally fine. <laughs> and then maybe coming out on the opposite side. It's always better to come out of this, I find, sideways, especially for me. Like, I have a really spindly little neck, and if I, can, if I try to come out of camel like this, uh, it never works well. So come out to the side. And then take a real child's pose here for just a moment. Sitting back into your hips. <sighs> Taking a moment to notice how you feel. Breathing into the whole body. Feeling that breath expand into your hips, into your lower back. And then find your way into Pajmatanasana. Yeah, so my legs are straight out in front of me. My feet are flexed towards the front. If there's a slight bend in your knees, that's fine. Um, again, we're really in this pose, it's really important to protect the lower back. So if you can only arch forward this much, fine. What I don't want is for you guys to be like all hunched over like this, yeah? So again, because this time we're folding forward, I want to prepare for this posture by going the opposite way. So I'm going to fold forward, but first I'm going to arch my back and round, creating space in between my shoulder blades, space in the back of my pelvis. And then waving up from my tailbone, creating length, and then hinging forward from my hips very gently, only as far as is comfortable for you. 
Have a nice breath here. And then go ahead and come in to a lung position. Okay. You may want to take a moment and either in happy baby or maybe grabbing behind your knees and just gently rolling from side to side, massaging the lower back, especially after practicing some back bend with filed bend and camel. Just massaging that lymphatic area. Hmm. And then when you're ready, I'm going to move the opposite way so you can still hear me. Going ahead and finding your way into Shavasana. If you like to put something under like a blanket or a pillow underneath your knees, that's fine. Arms resting out to the sides. Think about pushing through your heels for just a moment. Can you actively push through the heels to create a bit of space? Tensing the muscles in the legs, but then just allowing them to rest, fall, feet fall out to the side. If you're comfortable closing your eyes here, go ahead and close your eyes. And beginning to notice again the contact between your body and the mat. Allow you felt yourself to feel supported by the earth. We have this stable foundation. We are just allowed to rest. If you can, give yourself permission here to really, really relax. This is your time for your practice. There's nothing else you need to do right now. Begin to connect with your breathing. And just notice the natural rhythm of your breath. Not trying to force anything, just noticing. Noticing that there's no effort here. There's almost a sensation of being breathing. You don't have to do anything. Begin to explore where you feel your breath. Not trying to change it in any way, but just being curious. Where do you tend to breathe naturally? Do you feel the breath more in your belly, in your chest? Do you feel it more in the right side of the body or the left side? Simply noticing.
Now just for a moment, feel the right side of the body. Feel only the right side of the body. Allow it to be heavy. Allowing it to sink down into your mat. Now bring your awareness to the left side of the body. Feel only the left side of the body. And again, allow this side to be heavy. Any residual tension just melting away. And now feel your entire body from your head to your toes, out through your fingers. Awareness everywhere at the same time. And then gently moving your fingers, your toes. Maybe stretching your arms up and over your head. And then rolling on to one side. Giving yourself a moment here to allow everything to settle. And in your own time, beginning to make your way back up to a seated position. With your eyes still closed, if possible, begin to rub your hands together to generate some heat. And then placing the palms of your hands again over that area that you felt at the beginning of the class, just below the nipples. Feeling the warmth of your hands. Feeling the breath. And then when you're ready, bringing your hands into Anjali Mudra in front of the heart center. Thanking yourself for spending the time today to feel your body, to move. And then gently bring your forehead forward, bowing the head towards the hands, opening the eyes, and we're all finished. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. The Mindful Life Practice.